Hi, today we'll be cutting a loader like the one right here, which you may have already seen if you're a patron on Patreon. We'll be doing it with a single div, the one you see right here, and 20 CSS declarations. So let's maximize the CSS panel because we won't be writing anything else. And we begin with something you may remember if you've seen my previous videos, that is setting a few base layout styles on the HTML, on the body, and on the div element. So we're going to have display grid. And next, we're going to want to make our div a square. So we are going to start out by setting a padding. So let's say it's going to be something like 9ms and um, a background, just so that you can see it. And let's bring up dev tools so I can clarify that a square thing. Okay, now you can see it. Okay, and we're going to look at the computed panel. You can see how the height is zero. So basically um, the height that you see right there, the black part is made up of the top padding and the bottom padding. And then horizontally, it just stretches all across the body. Or what you see that white space, that's a margin around the body. And if we select the body, you're going to see that margin, okay? So that's a margin around the body. We're not going to bother with it. Uh, it's there from the browser styles. We don't care, okay? Uh, but what we want is to make the content box of this div be a zero by zero box. And we're going to do that by setting play self center. This way it's going to shrink to the minimum required space in the center, both horizontally and vertically. And now you may say it doesn't really look centered vertically. And that's because at this point, we don't have an explicit height set on the body or on the HTML. So now they take the height of their content. Uh, the height of the body's content is the height of this div, which is basically made up of the top and bottom padding, right? And then the height of the HTML is the height of the body plus that margin around the body. Okay, so HTML, you can see how the height of the HTML is basically the height of the body plus that margin around the body. Uh, so what we can do to fix this is explicitly set the height on the HTML. So make it full viewport height and you can see it now, okay? And you already see the grid cell in which the body is placed. Uh, I don't know when or how I clicked that or enabled it, whatever, but it's, re it's really cool that you can see it and you can see our square in the middle. Great, that's what we wanted. Now let's make things more interesting with a nicer background because we don't want just something plain black. And we are going to start with a radial gradient. This is going to start from black in the middle, then it's going to go to white and then back to black. And by default, the center of a radial gradient is in the very center of its background size box. By default, its background size box is its padding box. And let's go here. And just imagine that this square isn't rotated by 45 degrees. Basically, uh, that there in the middle, that point, is a zero by zero content box, right? Uh, this radius of this uh, blue circle that tightly fits inside the square, this is basically the padding, and it's also half of the square edge, okay? The square is the padding box, right? So we can consider how that's the center of the gradient. Uh, the 0% of the gradient line so is there. And the 100% of the gradient line by default is in the corner of the background size box, which by default coincides with the padding box. So it's there. And you can see it here how, right, we start from black, right, we go to white, and then we get back at black in the corner. But we don't want that. We want to get back at black on the edge. So basically, this is going to be the 0%, you know, on the gradient line. And this is going to be 100% on the gradient line. Basically, 100% is going to be on this blue circle. So in order to do that, we are going to need to set here closest side. So you can see how now we start from black in the middle, white, and then we go back to black. We're already back at black on the edge. And of course, from there on, it's still black, but we don't care about that. We don't care about uh, those corners. We're going to ditch them anyway. Okay, so next step is we're going to add another gradient layer, this time a conic one. So we're going to have conic 
gradient and we're going to start from white and go to black um, put a comma there because otherwise it's not going to work and now this conic gradient is on top of the radial one but we're, deal we're going to deal with that later what I want to show you is that we start from white there at 12 o'clock right and we go around the whole circle clockwise 360 degrees and we get to black but we don't want that sharp transition there so we're going to go back to white right and now you can see how we start from white at 12 o'clock we go to black at 6 o'clock and then we go around back to white okay but we don't want to obscure the bottom layer what we actually want is to combine the two layers and we're going to do that with blending so we're going to blend the two background layers now I gave a talk last oh poof yeah it was already almost two years ago anyway I I gave a talk uh, before I lost track of time and you know that story whatever so I gave a talk and it included some stuff about blending and um, things like that and I'm going to use some of the slides to explain I'm going to be linking to the slides but not everything in the slides is relevant to what we're doing here because that covers a lot more so anyway I'll be going back and forth with these slides because this is the only graphical uh, thing I have to explain some concepts so yeah uh, blending is basically combining two layers into a single one so you can say that this is the top layer and this is the bottom layer and just like we have in our demo we only have shades of gray so we go from black to white this is a soft gradient going through grays this is a sharp gradient no grays just black and white doesn't really matter anything so basically every element is like a grid of pixels and we take you know pixel by pixel and we blend the corresponding pixels so you can see how we have like a black box there and we have two inputs the first input is the pixel of the top layer the second input is the pixel of the bottom layer we get one output okay so um, one thing uh, that's relevant here is we use percent channel values this means that zero is always zero right 255 is going to be 100% which is equivalent to 1 so 50% is equivalent to 0.5 and so on right and everything is basically a value between 0 and 1 the channel values um, yeah I also say here that we only care about multiply and screen um, darken is the same thing as multiply when one of the layers is just black and white so no grays no, just plain black and plain white right and screen is the same thing as lighten when one of the layers is just plain black and plain white okay so just so you know that part and let's move on to multiply what multiply does so as the name may suggest it multiplies the two channel values which we said are numbers between zero and one now if one channel value is zero which corresponds to black right so in our case we only have like grayscale stuff right so if I say one channel, all channels are going to have the same value. So if a layer's pixel is black, the result is also going to be black, right? And knowing that white corresponds to one and anything multiplied by one remains unchanged, if a layer's pixel is white, the result is identical to the other, layer, to the other layer's corresponding pixel. Let me just show you that visually. So if we have mixed blend mode, multiply. Now in this case, since one of the layers is just plain black and plain white darken is going to produce the exact same result just so you know so everywhere where we have black in one layer the result is also going to be black you can see how when they overlap we see the result of blending now everywhere we have white in one layer the result is going to be the other layer okay so basically we multiply these values how about where we don't have anything uh, we don't have uh, either black or white well we simply perform this multiplication and the result of multiplying two numbers between 0 and 1 is always going to be at least as big as the smallest of them right so if we have for example 0.2 multiplied with 1 this is going to give us 0.2 if we have 
for example, 0.2 multiplied with 0.2, this is going to give us 0 0.04, okay? So that's the idea. If we have two grays, we are going to get a darker gray. So here we have this sort of gradient going from white at 12 o'clock to black at 6 o'clock and then back to white. And we're going to multiply it with the layer underneath, which is that uh, ring, which you remember we have uh, black in the middle and then we have white, a ring of white, and then uh, we have black all around. So let's um, do that. Background blend mode. We use background blend mode to mix background layers and mix blend mode to, make, uh, to blend element layers. So this is going to be multiply. Let's see it. And it's kind of like what we expected. So we have that ring, right? And it's brighter, whiter, where the top layer has white. So there at the top, we start from white and then we go to black at six o'clock. Okay, so we have something like this. Now, the next step is going to get rid of that blurriness and we're going to use a contrast filter. So contrast, oh uh, yeah, filter is the property. Okay, contrast is the function. And we're going to use a pretty large values, let's say something like 20. Okay, this looks pretty weird. And um, we're going to want to make the ring bigger. So let's make uh, the ring of the bottom layer bigger. Uh, we're going to use a percentage, let's say 50%. So let me just show you what making the ring bigger means. So here, right, we're going to have black all the way up to 50% and then we're going to start transitioning to white and then back to black. And this should give us something nicer. Okay, much nicer ring with that contrast. But how does this contrast work? Let's get back to these slides because I have something on that as well. Okay, so. Okay, now this is not something. Oh, okay. This is not something we're uh, using here, but for contrast values smaller than one, these push the RGB channel values to the middle of the 0 to 255 interval. So every channel value is between 0 and 255. And if we apply a contrast value that's smaller than one, these channel values get pushed towards the middle of this interval. And a contrast value of zero always gives us a 50% gray. Now, let me just explain to you visually what that 50% gray means. Now, if you're familiar with the HSL bicone, we have this hue going all around the bicone, right? And if we explode this, we are going to see a bit more. So in the middle, the middle axis of this uh, bicone is the line from black at the bottom to white at the top. You can kind of see this is basically the middle axis of the bicone. And we can take a slice of this, a vertical slice of this. And um, now if we zero the saturation, we're going to be on the axis. And if we zero the saturation, it doesn't matter uh, what hue we have, the resulting gray is always the same. So if we zero the saturation, the hue doesn't matter anymore. And now we can move the lightness between zero where we have black. So we have black at lightness zero and 100% where we have white. And we can bring it to the middle to 50%. So this is what we get for contrast zero. Regardless of the input, this 50% gray is what we get for contrast zero. Okay? Let's uh, just uh, look at that. So. We start with a contrast of one, which is the same as 100%. So 100% uh, is the same as one, 50% is the same as 0 0.5, okay? And we go down, we decrease the contrast, decrease it. This is basically 0 0.5. And you can see how we get the same gray. Here we have semi-transparency, but other than that, we have the same gray everywhere. Now for contrast values bigger than one, we do the exact opposite. So 
we don't push the RGB channel values towards the middle of the 0 to 155 interval. We push them towards the end. Uh, and for large enough values, push them all the way to 0 or 255, such that we only get one of these eight possible colors. So all the channels are either 0 or 255, and we have eight possible combinations. Now, let's see, for this um, element right here, we have a plain uh, solid color background, and the first channel, the red channel, is 255, the second one is 155, and this is lighter... Oh, I'm so sorry about the drilling. Uh, yeah, I keep trying to record something without drilling, and I'm really, really sorry. Anyway, uh, this is higher than the middle between 0 and 255. So it's going to get pushed up to the 255 value. Now, this is smaller than the middle between 0 and 255. So it's going to get pushed down to 0. So basically, the result is going to be 255, uh, 255, 0, which gives us basically yellow. Now, if we increase the contrast, you're going to see how we're going towards yellow. Okay, so we got yellow. Now here, we start with this. Uh, 255, 0, these are already at the end. This is bigger than uh, the middle between uh, 0 and 255, so it's going to get pushed up to 255. So we're going to get 255, 0, 255, which is basically this color right here, right? Here, we are going to get something, all three, all three is 0, because all three are smaller than the middle between 0 and 255, okay? So we're going to get black there, and here, down here, we're going to get the same result as here, right? And we have a few more options, let's just see, right? And here, it looks like a middle of the way, like a 50% gray. What is it going to happen when we push this to the limit? Well, first, it's not quite that middle of the way, that 50% gray. It's slightly different. And slightly different still means it can get pushed to one of the ends. And you can see how they're slightly different. Um, you can see uh, 128 is closer to 255 than zero. 127 is closer to zero than to 255. So that's uh, the really fun part there. So regardless of the color, it can get pushed to one of these ends. So uh, here there are a few theoretical things, but what I want to show you is what happens when we have this uh, sort of image and you can see it's basically zoomed in and we can see the pixel grid. So each one of these squares is like a pixel, right? So every gray that is lighter than a 50% gray gets pushed towards white. And every gray that is darker than a 50% gray gets pushed towards black. So let's increase the contrast. And you can see how everything becomes either white or black. That little line is just a glitch there, so yeah, that may happen. <laughs> okay, now having done this, this is how it applies there. However, we want rounding, so how do you get that? Well, this is where blurring enters the picture, so let's get back to the slides. <laughs> okay, I cannot use a keyboard. Let's get back to blurring. And there's a lot more theoretical info about the blurring, and there's some stuff that's irrelevant, like what happens at the edges, which we're not going to care in our particular use case for this demo today. But let's zoom in here so we can see the pixel grid, right? So we zoom in. Now you can see the grid more clearly. And we are going to use another grid, a second grid, a grid of weights, right? So this basically is going to tell us, using this grid of weights, is going to tell us what the resulting value, the 
the three channels of the pixel at this point in the middle of the grid are going to be after blurring and the size of the grid is going to determine on how many pixels around it depends. In this case, it's going to depend on all the pixels that this grid of weights is covering. Let's move a bit further. So here, let's say that we have this uh, four by four pixel element, right? And we're going to blur it. And the resulting red channel here is computed as you see right here. So we are going to take the weight value there, which is one, multiply it with the red channel of that pixel right there, right? And then we're going to add to the product between the weight right there, multiplied with the red channel of the pixel right there, and so on. And we're going to take every pixel that is covered by one of uh, these um, cells of the grid of weights, okay? And this is going to give us the result for that pixel in the middle, right? And for each and every one of them. Now, it's more complicated what happens at the edges, but as I said, we don't care for our particular use case, okay? So now this basically explains how we get um, uh, that grid of weights. Uh, we start with one and this one is the result of one plus zero. This one is the result of one plus zero. This one is the result of one plus zero. This two is the result of one plus one, okay? And so on, this three is the result of one plus two. This one is the result of one plus nothing, okay? And so on, this is how we get uh, all the values right here, and the grid, we get it by multiplying those vectors that we have. So for example, uh, if the grid size is three, right? Like right here, we have one, two, one. So we multiply one with one and we get that one. We multiply one with two and we get that two. We multiply one with this one right here and we get this one. We multiply two uh, with one and we get this two, we multiply two with two and we get that four in the middle and so on. <laughs> I'm not going to go through all of uh, those cells, right? So this is how we get grids of different sizes. Okay, moving further, uh, there are a few theoretical things. I'm going to be linking to the slides, but uh, yeah, we don't really care about all that stuff. So what we want to do is first get a bit of blurring right? We have these two elements and let's assume that we don't have um, transparency there and we have white, right? Um, so you can see how we get something like that by blurring and just assume that we don't have semi-transparency there and instead we have just lighter grays on white, okay? So this is what you get by blurring, right? And here you can basically see those two put on white and as I said before, lighter than 50% gray pushes it to white, a big contrast pushes it to white. Darker than 50% uh, gray, a big contrast pushes it to black. So what we're going to do is add a blur and then another contrast. So uh, one thing I haven't mentioned, I pick the blur value in pixels. So let's say it's going to be something like nine. And then the contrast value is going to be three times that. So our um, chain of two filters is going to be blur, uh, that unitless uh, pixel value uh, times one pixel, and um, contrast three times that uh, unitless blur value. And now we add that chain here. Now let's say we want to increase the rounding right there. You might think it's really easy. We just uh, increase that number to something like this or like this. But you can see how this really shortens our arc and it's not what we want. Something else we can do and it's more interesting, we add that chain again, which is why I set it to F right there so we can add it easily. But this also shortens it a bit. And if you want it longer, we're going to need to work on this conic gradient a bit. So for example, it's not going to go all the way to black. So if you remember, this conic gradient went from white here at 12 o'clock 
to black at six o'clock. But what if we don't go all the way to black, if we go to a gray, so something like this. You can see how this makes our arc longer. And of course, we can go to something like this. And yeah, that's even more interesting. Let's uh, get back to just uh, three. I think that's enough. Okay, now making things colorful. I touched a bit on that a bit earlier. So let's get back to it. So when I discussed multiply, right? This is how we make things colorful. So basically we have a layer that's just black and white, our case, where we are right now. And uh, we blend it with another layer that's colorful, a nice gradient. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to leave the black and white layer on an after pseudo, and we're going to get that colorful layer on a before pseudo element. So now we are going to take these two and we are going to put them uh, before and uh, after, right? Uh, we're also going to need to set content because otherwise pseudos are not going to show up. We are going to take this background and this is going to be just on the after. Um, okay, better formatting. Now we're going to set the background here uh, deep pink just so that we can see it for now. And you can see how we want them stacked, right? Let's get back here. We want them stacked one on top of the other so we can blend them. But for now, they're in different grid cells. So we're going to fix that by putting them in the same grid cell at the intersection between the first row and first column. So we're going to have grid area, first row, first column. Now they overlap, right? And then we are going to blend them. We could also use multiply, but as I said before, in the case where one of the layers is just plain black and plain white, we can also use darken and it's the exact same thing. So darken takes uh, the darker, the smaller channel value. Now black is zero, 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 zero. So everything is going to be bigger than zero. So zero is smaller than everything. So this is going to come out on top in the resulting layer, black always. Now white is going to have 255, which corresponds to one on all three channels. But all possible channel values are at most one. So then everything is going to be smaller, so darker than white, okay? So we're going to use mixed blend mode this time. So mixed blend mode is for blending different elements, so element layers. Background blend mode is for blending background layers. Uh, darken. And now you can see it there. Okay, we see those edges there. Uh, we can set on the body a background, right? Something like this. But we don't want to see those edges, so on the before, we're going to set a clip path. Clip path and inset, I don't know, 5%. that gives us a bit of white there. So maybe we're going to just uh, reduce that to 98% or something. <laughs> let's make it 97 and let's make this um, eight because I think it's going to work better. This is pretty much a game of tweaking here. So, um, yeah. Well, let's actually make this like this. Okay. So I think this should do it. 
Okay, now let's have a nicer background here. Uh, let's say we're going to have linear gradient and um, I don't know. You can see how that gold starts to get darker, but we don't get far enough with those uh, lateral arms so that uh, we can see the navy part. Uh, let's add another radial gradient on top. This is going to go from transparent to deep pink. Of course, you need a comma, otherwise nothing's going to show up. Um, let's say that this... So deep pink is going to go up to the same percentage there. Uh, we're also going to use closest side, right? And transparent is going to be, I don't know, 1.3 times that percentage value. Maybe something smaller. Something like that. I think it works pretty well. I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, now the next step is going to be animation. Okay, so we're going to do that with um, Houdini. So we're going to animate a custom property. To do that, we're going to need to register it. Property. So let's say we're going to have syntax. This is going to be an angle. Yeah, I cannot type. Inherits false because we are not going uh, to want to inherit anything. We only animate uh, stuff on the pseudo elements. So we're going to use that. So for example, here, So we can have a fallback for the browsers that don't animate. And we're also going to use something here, let's say uh, in the other direction. So zero degrees. Okay, so um, I must have messed up something but I have no idea of what. Okay, um, no, I didn't, it works. Okay, now let's animate that. Keyframes. Three turns. Um, make it easy and out. Infinite, let's see it. Okay, so, um, oh, hmm. Okay, so nothing's animating. Property, yeah, I cannot, <laughs> I cannot spell, that is the problem. And you can see how it works now. Okay, nice. Uh, let's get another nicer easing function. So it just has a bit more flair. Okay, nice. Okay, um, now maybe we don't want that fully back, uh, black uh, background. So um, we are going to grayify it with the same kind of uh, strategy. So again, it's something I'm explaining here. So if um, we want to have something like a screen, which is going to be identical if one of the layers is just black and white, it's going to be identical uh, to something like uh, lighten. Okay, so if a layer's pixel is white, the result pixel is also going to be white in the screen case. And if a layer's pixel is black, the result is going to be identical to the other corresponding pixel. The same thing for lighten, because lighten 
takes the lighter pixel and white is lighter than everything else right and black is darker than everything else so everything else is lighter than black so you can see right here wherever we have white the resulting layer is going to be white wherever you have black the resulting layer is going to be the other layer now in our case we have one uh, layer right that has black and is colorful but if we use lighten right and we blend with another layer that is darker than this colorful part everywhere so every channel is smaller than every channel of this colorful part right so if we blend it with something that's not black but it's still very dark then we are going to get this colorful loader thing on a not really black but still dark background so let's say that we are going to have a before on the body and actually we are going to move a few styles so body before div right uh, so we are going to make them all stack one top of the other Um, actually uh, we also need to stack the div so I think better yet we're going to do something like this right and um, something else uh, we're going to need a content right so we're going to also take out the content uh, I cannot me and typing we are not friends and we're going to have background inherit okay i finally managed to type that so we're going to have a dark background that's still not black right so something like this and here we are going to blend this div with the before of the body so we're going to have mix blend mode lighten So you can see how that looks right there so nice okay so uh, yeah this is it this is what i wanted to show you for today i hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have if you like the work that i'm putting out for 10 years now and you want me to be able to do more in the future please consider supporting it you can do so by being a cool cat and becoming a patron on patreon the link is going to be in the description or if monthly support is not your style there's the option of one-time donation again the link is going to be in the description or you can make the stray cat happy with a gift of her wish list. The links are going to be in the description for that as well. Or you could at least share this to show the world what can be done at CSS these days. Because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching. The links for everything are going to be in the description for the resources as well as Patreon and all that stuff. They're in the description. Uh, everything that's needed to understand this stuff linked in the description and I'll see you next time. Bye.